Starting a vertical farm at home can provide your family with fresh veggies all year round. And with a little ingenuity, you could even turn your vertical farming hobby at home into a very profitable business. So what exactly are vertical farms? And what do you need to have one in your very own home? Stay tuned and we'll answer every question you have. First things first, what's vertical farming? We know it sounds complicated, but it's actually super simple. Vertical farming is basically just using a system of racks, towers, or shelves to stack plants vertically. Do you live in the city? Are you stuck in a teeny tiny apartment with barely any space for gardening? Do you want to grow a vegetable garden, but don't seem to have any room for it? If that's how you feel, then you're in luck, because we've got some good news for you. We know how the limited spaces of a city life can get frustrating for the urban gardener. Don't worry though, growing a vegetable garden is anything but impossible. In fact, with a bit of smart planning and imagination, vegetable gardens can be grown anywhere, regardless of space. The real beauty of vertical gardening at home is the fact that it hardly takes up any space. A closet, a corner of your kitchen, or an unfinished basement could be the perfect spot for starting your own vertical farm. You'll need to be able to control the temperature and humidity, as well as provide a lot of artificial light, water, and fertilizer. Next up, here's everything you'll need to have to start vertical farming. Before starting a vertical farm, you'll need to get your hands on some essential equipment. A wine rack shelving unit with grow lights is one good option. You could also build tower gardens from PVC pipes. This one's a pretty popular choice. Pretty much any vegetable that can be grown in a garden will also most definitely work well as a container grown plant. There's also no real limitation on the type of container that can be used for growing vegetable plants. Old wash tubs, wooden crates, gallon sized coffee cans, and even five gallon ones could work. Buckets can also be used for growing crops as long as they provide adequate drainage. That's two birds with one stone. You get to use your green thumb and practice the three environmental mental R's. The type of equipment you choose for vertical gardening at home can also decide whether you'll be planting in soil, a soilless medium, or using a hydroponic system. Any of these methods will give you healthy and fresh vegetables. Soilless mediums and hydroponics are a really good choice since they're usually free from soil-borne parasites and disease. But pests and pathogens can still be introduced into these systems and quickly overtake the plants, so you need to be careful. Moving on, what can you grow in your vertical farm? The first step is to determine what the conditions are in the area you want to place the vegetable garden. The amount of sunlight is going to be the most important factor in deciding which plants will thrive in your urban environment. For example, if you live in an area surrounded by other buildings, the balcony or patio could probably be shaded most of the time. In that case, you should choose your plants accordingly. Leafy vegetables like cabbage, lettuce, and other greens do really well with limited sunlight and would make a great choice for shady areas. If you're blessed with an abundance of sunshine, you're lucky, you have a big selection of plants to choose from, since vegetables thrive best in full sun. Choices here can include peppers, tomatoes, beans, carrots, potatoes, and radishes. Mounting a hydroponic jar garden on a south-facing wall could also provide you and your family with a steady supply of herbs, lettuce, and greens. Even vine crops like squash, cucumbers, and pumpkins can be grown, as long as the container is deep enough to accommodate them and proper staking is available. Fill the containers with peat moss and a suitable potting mix amended with compost or manure, and you're good to go. Over time, as you gain experience, you should experiment with vertically farmed tomatoes, peppers, or woody herbs like rosemary. These vegetables take longer to go from seed to harvest, but often go for a relatively higher price at market. That's right, you can even turn this into a side hustle. If your goal is to sell vertical garden produce for a profit, we've got some advice for you. Do some research and choose a crop based on its marketability in your area. Does the restaurant down the block need a steady supply of micro greens? Or do you plan on growing fresh strawberries year-round for your local grocery store? Look at the options you have. You should also think about growing a fast-turn crop. Microgreens can take less than a month to mature, but on the other hand, crops like tomatoes and peppers can take two to three months to put out their first fruit. How soon you're looking to get a return on your investment can really influence your choice of crops. You should also start slowly. The type of equipment used in vertical farming can vary according to the crop you've chosen to grow. Before you dip into your savings and invest all of them in a snap piece setup, for example, trial the crop for operational costs, yields, and selling price. You'll need to be really smart about this. Lastly, make sure you diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket 
or in this case, fill your vertical farm with only one type of crop. Growing a variety of vegetables or herbs could mean a much steadier cash flow and protection against total loss in case one crop fails. Now, here are a few different ways you can have a vertical garden without it taking up too much space. There's so many tools and methods you can use to create a vertical vegetable garden, especially one that'll produce the same amount of fresh vegetables while saving space. Shelves can give you the benefit of growing a variety of vegetables on each level as high up as your available space allows. You can position the vertical vegetable garden to let all the plants receive adequate amounts of sunlight at the same time. Any type of shelving can be used, but the best type is the kind with slats. This allows better air circulation and during water intervals, all the excess water on the top shelves trickles down to the bottom. You can also place hanging baskets on the balcony. A lot of vegetables can be grown in them, especially trailing plants. Peppers and cherry tomatoes not only look good in hanging baskets, but they also thrive nicely in them. Just make sure you keep them watered daily, since hanging baskets are prone to drying out, especially during hot spells. Trellises are another great way to support trailing or vine crops. A fence can also be used as a trellis for plants like beans, peas, and tomatoes, as well as vine crops like squash and cucumbers. Corn stalks from sunflowers are another great way to use vertical space while creating pole supports for beans and other climbing vegetables. Using the rungs of a stepladder as a makeshift trellis to support pumpkin and tomato plant vines is also a good option. Be creative and find something that works for you. Growing a vertical vegetable garden is the perfect way for urban gardeners and others to still enjoy a good harvest of freshly grown vegetables without taking up their already limited space. Finally, shared gardens are also a great alternative if you're one for the outdoors. Community gardens are a great option for people who don't have the viable space to raise plants, but want to reap the rewards of a growing season. Unfortunately, traditional community gardens aren't that widely available, and some smaller cities and towns don't even have the funding to develop such a valuable community resource. For this reason, shared gardens have gained popularity. They provide fresh produce for anyone in need, and rather than maintaining individual plots, members of the garden volunteer their time to tend one large growing area. This strategy makes the garden much easier to manage, more productive, and also minimizes the need for extensive maintenance. Foods produced from the garden are shared among members or with others outside of the organization. There's also donated produce, which is given to local food banks and other groups that distribute to non-growers. Another type of garden sharing relates directly to the sharing of land. These types of gardens connect people with access to growing space for those wishing to garden or grow their own food. Through a mutual agreement and cooperation, crops are produced and shared between everyone who's a part of it. This is a real win-win scenario for everyone involved. Growers that are passionate about working the soil and feeling content knowing their skills are making a difference, since their produce nourishes their neighbors as well. With established guidelines and boundaries, gardens like these can create strong feelings of respect and connectedness in a community. Through hard work and collaboration, gardening and growing plants with other people can become a wonderful and fulfilling hobby. That's a wrap for this video. What are you planning on growing in your vertical garden? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more more videos like this. See you in the next one!